All right, so let's talk about um, how to import our Blender file into Unity. So in my case, I had to actually export the um, Blender file as an FBX in Blender. Um, when I brought in my Cyclops, for some reason, it doesn't, it's not able to find um, <clears throat> the mesh or, or something. I think it's just new versions of Unity and Blender not playing nice together. Um, so I exported it as an FBX, which is what Unity wants natively anyways. Um, for this demo, I didn't texture paint this or anything, so um, this creature will not have any textures. Um, but if I click on my Cyclops FBX um, here, I can see all these different options for the model. Um, I can just drag it into my scene to see it. Oh, and it has a camera and stuff, which I don't need. I can delete that. Oh, gosh. All right. <laughs> uh, let's see, I'm going to unpack this prefab completely, and then I'll delete the camera, I'll delete the light, <clears throat> and the rest of it can stay. I can see it here in my scene. Um, if it's a different scale than I'm expecting, I can change the scale factor here, um, but one is probably fine. Uh, there's a bunch of other options that you shouldn't need to worry about, probably. Um, this is all fine. Um, there's a, there are features for a proper humanoid rig. Um, I don't expect that any of you will make a perfectly normal humanoid rig. Um, but if you were using something from, um, uh, Mixamo or something like that, there's ways you can set it up to work with some nice features in Unity here, but that's fine. We'll leave it generic, create our avatar from this model. Now, animation is the part um, that we really care about. So you should, you should be able to see here um, a, an animation clip for each of those actions that you made. And I had an empty action in there as well called just action. I can get rid of that one. Um, but these other two I actually want. And if I click it and play it, I should see it playing in this little preview window down here. Uh, same with my walk. <clears throat> Oh, interesting. All right. Oh, yeah. OK. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, I forgot. <laughs> so in order for um, my root motion to work, so when I built my animation, I didn't have this character walking in place. I have it actually move forward. And so I want to use that root motion to control the game object's motion in the scene. In order to do that, I have to tell Unity which bone in my hierarchy, uh, which bone in my armature, I mean, is the root bone. So I go back to Rig, and then under Root Node, I select Armature and then Root. And you can see why it's so, 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 so helpful to name these things descriptively. So I'll hit Root, I'll hit Apply. And now, when I click over to animation and I select walk, you can see we're walking. <clears throat> I'm wondering why it's doing that, but it shouldn't be a problem for us. Normally, this should be right underneath our character. So uh, in order to make these all loop properly, um, I have to, for each of them, select loop time and then loop pose. So it'll automatically loop it and then try to match the pose exactly. So it can um, kind of, uh, if, if the poses aren't exactly the same at the beginning and end of your loop, Unity can kind of fix it. Um, but it'll look weird if the poses are very different. So with my walk, I'll do the same thing. So we should see it more or less looping. Whoa. There we go. <clears throat> uh, OK, so our root transform position and rotation. Um, for our idle pose, we don't want these to actually affect our movement at all. So I'll just say bake these into the pose. And you can see that's we're not moving around anymore. <clears throat> for our walk cycle, 
we do want it to affect our um, position, but not our uh, Y position, not our height off the ground. So I'll bake that into pose, and I'll bake the rotation into pose as well. We should be walking perfectly straight forward, which is what it seems like we're doing. And then I'll hit apply. So now if I open my Cyclops FBX, I should, she I should see an animation clip for our idle pose and for our walk. <clears throat> I can select my Cyclops in the scene here. If you don't have one in a scene, you can go ahead and just drag it in. And we have this thing here called an animator component. This is basically our interface between um, scripting and our animations. So I can pretty much just click and drag the idle here, and it creates this controller, which is an asset that appears here. So if I select my Cyclops, and then I click this window, the animator, which you can find uh, window animation animator if you don't have it open. <clears throat> we should see this weird kind of flow chart. And this is how we'll control our transitions between animations. This has a lot of features for um, having code control when and how we transition between animations. Because I created this thing by uh, this animator by dragging our idle animation onto the game object, um, armature idle is our default pose. So we start here, this arrow means a transition, and we're in our idle pose. So I can drag the walk animation in here now. So they're like that. <clears throat> in order to transition from idle to walk, I can right click and then select make transition, drag this little line there. So now I have a line connecting these. And then I'll make another transition back. So what we should see now when we hit play is that um, our character plays the idle animation, and once that's done, moves to the walking animation and plays that once. So I'll go to my game view, and I'll hit play. So there it is. Now it's walking. Now it's bobbing. Now it's walking. <clears throat> this might be a little easier to see if I rotate our character. Now you might notice um, this character is actually walking in place. So in order to actually have the walk push our character forwards, I have to turn this on, apply root motion. Turn that on, on the animator that's attached to the Cyclops. And now our Cyclops should walk forward every time. If we want it to continue this walk cycle um, a little bit longer before it goes back to our idle pose, I can actually click on these transitions. And you can see it has an exit time. So I can use this, all this stuff here to control when it transitions from walk to idle and also how long that transition takes. So I can slide this over and then slide this. Oops, this other end over. Uh, here. I'll just move that to like there. And so now you can see we'll go through three cycles of walking before transitioning to our idle position. So it waits four and three quarters seconds or so before transitioning to our idle. And you can even adjust. Uh, the length of that transition and preview it here. So that doesn't look so good. Maybe we want a gentler transition. That looks okay. It's not perfect. If you really wanted to do this properly, you'd have another animation clip for starting to walk and another for stopping walking um, so that we're not having this moment where the feet kind of slide in place underneath us. But. Uh, that's more complicated than you really need to do for this class, I would say. So I'll hit play. And now we should begin walking and do it a few times. 
and then stand there and then walk. We could increase the time of that standing animation as well. If I click on this other transition, I'll maybe, maybe have it alternate around four seconds. I'll switch over to the idle. There we go. So now if I hit play, we idle. There we go. Now, later on, um, we'll learn how to control when these transitions happen using conditions, which can be triggered uh, with code. And that's how you build interactive characters. But for your first assignment, your characters do not need to be interactive at all. All right, that's it.